Today is August 7th, 2018, and for the most part, most, and for the most part, it's an average day. You know, Apple's closing in on a trillion dollars in stock value. Uh, cell phone notches, they're the new cool thing. And AMD is slowly becoming a CPU power arch, which I think is exciting, and you should too. But in days of yore, things were a bit more technical. On August 7th, 1944, Harvard University was presented the IBM Automatic Sequence Controlled Calculator, or ASCC, which later became known as the Harvard Mark I. Easier name. Smaller acronym. It's like this big. The Mark I was a general purpose electromechanical computer. This computation device was the brainchild of Howard H. Aiken, who in November 1937 presented the original concept for the machine to IBM. And after IBM engineers performs a feasibility study and like the company chairman was probably like, dude, I don't, I mean, you're real smart. You got like a PhD from Harvard. I get that. Uh, but I don't know what this really is. But you know what? YOLO. You only live once, man. And the project was greenlit in 1939. The ASCC or Harvard Mark I was developed and built by IBM at their Edcott plant. And then it was shipped to Harvard in February 1944 and began computations for the U.S. Navy Bureau of Ships. It was officially presented to Harvard, though, on August 7th, today, but in 1944. The Mark I was built from switches, relays, and rotating shafts and clutches. It used over 765,000 electrical and mechanical components and hundreds of miles of wire. This thing was huge. Having a volume of 816 cubic feet, it was 51 foot long, 8 foot high, and 2 feet deep. And it weighed in at a hefty 10,000 LBs. Well, for scale, it's like two 2018 F-150s. I guess they're pretty light, though. They're, they're made of aluminum. But the basic calculation units had to be synchronized and power mechanically. To do this, they used a 50 foot drive shaft coupled to a 5 horsepower motor. 5. And this motor, you know, it served as you know, not only the power supply unit, but also the system clock. Ooh, fancy. Now we've been calling this monstrosity a computer, but we would think of it more of like a calculator today. You know, this, this is a big, slow calculator. I mean, it was, I mean, it was even in the original name, an automatic sequence controlled calculator. The Mark I had 60 sets of 24 switches for manual data entry, and it could store 72 numbers of up to 23 decimals long. It could do three additions or three subtractions in one second. A multiplication, though, that took six seconds. And the division, it took 15.3 seconds. And if you want to run a logarithm or a trigonometric function, it took over a minute. The Mark I read its instructions from 24 channel punch paper tape. It would read the current instructions and then execute it before moving on to the next one. A separate tape could contain numbers for inputs, but the two tape formats. They weren't interchangeable. I mean, give them a break. It's like the first computer. It's a compatibility. It's, it was even a problem then. And instructions couldn't be executed from a storage re register. I mean, you can't even switch tapes. You, you, know, you know, my first thoughts, but no, it wasn't overclockable. Not at all. Zero percent. I mean, these numbers are meaningless when you compare it to IBM's newest computation machine, the Summit supercomputer, whose processing power is 200 petaflops. And for scale, that's 1,000 million million floating point operations per second. And that thing does 200 of them every second. However, in 1944, the world wasn't focused on semi-truck sized calculators. There were far bigger problems in the world, and one of those being WW2. The war had been dragging on for years, and the US was getting desperate for a way to end the conflict once and for all. Enter John Von Neumann. Newman had a team at Los Alamos that used modified IBM punch card machines to determine the effects of implosion. On March 29th, 1944, he demanded to run certain problems regarding implosions on the Mark I. And in August 1944, he just showed up with two mathematicians to write a simulation program to study implosion of the first atomic bomb. Just showed up, just started punching paper. He's like, we're doing this now. This is, this is it. He showed that implosion designs, which would later be used on the Trinity and Fat Man bombs, were likely faster and more efficient than alternative gun type designs. The Mark I would eventually be followed by the Mark II, III, and IV, which were all works of Aiken. In 1959, though, the Mark I was assembled never to be used again. But portions of it are still on display at the Harvard Science Center, and other sections of the original scene were sent to IBM and the Smithsonian. While these original machines were large and slow, they were instrumental to solving some of the most complex problems of the day and helping us set the foundation for technology we still use today. Without these semi-truck-sized computers, you wouldn't have the computer you're using right now. We might, but might not have a bomb, big one, big old, big old nuclear bomb. 
Probably not a bad thing either, though. Thank you for watching this first episode of a new mini-series I like to call Today in Tech History. Super original. But hey, what we're going to do is we're going to look whatever, you know, every Tuesday we're going to have one of these episodes come out. We're going to look back into the crystal ball to see what happened way back when in technology history. Today being August 7th, on August 7th, 1944, the Mark I was presented to Harvard. Pretty cool. Next week we'll figure out something that happened then that was pretty cool and technology driven and we'll talk about it then. So if you like this episode, you like learning, you like history, you like tech, consider subscribing and we'll see you next week in the next episode of Technology Today. Today in technology. Today in tech history. We'll, 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 we'll figure out something good. To tech, to ta 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 technology, history, yesterday, yesterday's tech, today's tech, some guy's day, some tech, tech.